Hey guys, this is going to be the first video out of a series that is going to be covering basically everything you need to know in regards to the Ultimate Multiplayer FPS plugin. So this is going to be kind of like your introduction course on how to use it, what things are there for, what all is here, and how to use things and why. So I'll kind of be working you through like the intended use of how the system works basically. So how you can take it and merge it with your existing stuff, merge it with other people's stuff, or build your own systems with it. Now to begin, we're going to just start out with the character. So let's head over to the example character. And we're going to talk about a couple different things with it. Just realized that it's no longer need to be there. But the main thing about the character is going to be the character component. So this guy. So you can see here, mine's already inherited. That's because I'm inheriting this character from my C++ base class. You don't need to do that at all. The only reason I'm doing that is solely because I have my own character movement component already implemented in it. So this is more or less meant for people on Unreal Engine 4 to be able to have a base character in Blueprint that already has my character movement component in it, since you can't easily change it without using C++ and UE4. So that's the only reason. You can do this purely out of a Blueprint character class. It doesn't matter. You would just add the character component like you would anything else. So if we search for character, you can see FPS template character, you add the component, and you're good to go. Now, what all is the character component used for. So I try to describe this almost like an interface. So this interface is between the animation system and all of your held actors such as your firearm or an aiming actor such as a rangefinder or just a held optic. Now starting with the animation side, uh, you can see here we use the character component we call lean left and lean right and stop lean left and stop lean right. Same thing we call set sprinting on it and we go and we get our firearm and we call functions on that firearm like cycle fire mode or cycle point aim, cycle sights, all that kind of stuff. And that's all through the firearm. So it kind of acts like a way to go between them. So if you want to go like and lean left, you lean left. You want to lean right, you lean right. You go to high port, go back to normal, go to low port, go back to normal, you aim. All that stuff is done through the character component. So you can see here for things like aiming, what I do is when I release it, I stop aiming. However, when I, uh, whatchamacallit, when I press it, I start aiming, and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of like the core of what it's used for. It also has some basic settings in it that you might want to tinker with. So for example, this movement component, component sprint speed, that's going to be the max speed that your character movement component allows. That is what allows it to scale your speed with the movement sway. And you can ignore this force into sprint pose. That is for the sake of testing. But you have your max look up and look down angle. So if I change the look up angle to like, I don't know, let's do 25. You will see I can only look up 25 degrees. It kind of just gives you a lot of basic control that you don't have to do manually. Same thing for like the default lean angle, how far you can lean left and right, uh, how much to, how much, like how many, how much to incrementally lean when you go left or right, your leaning speed, uh, crouch stuff is a work in progress, uh, basic free look, which is not fully implemented, but it is for the most part. So like your free look range, how far you can look left, right, up and down, and the firearm collision. So what collision channel to use and whether or not to even use it in the first place. So those are your kind of like your core options. Next up, we have the actual animation blueprint. So this you can see here uses my animation instance class, which is a must. And the reason behind that is there is a ton of code that actually gets written behind the scenes. So if we look at the event graph, this is all I have in the animation update. It's just the procedural crouch stuff, which again is there for the sake of testing right now. It, you can really ignore that. And all of my animation notifiers. That's it. There's nothing actually, there's nothing else going on other than the anim graph. So all the actual logic is held on the C++ animation instance, so that's why you need it. Now, looking at things like the animation index and the new gameplay tag, that is purely based on your firearm. So, for example, the M4 has the animation index of 1, so that way when we hold the M4, we go and play the state machine because animation index is now going to be 1. Same thing goes with the same for the uh, tag system. Now, what I usually recommend people do and I have a video actually on this for the animation blueprint is to retarget this blueprint 
to their skeleton. That way it duplicates all of this stuff and just kind of works out of the box. So that way you don't have to go through and copy everything. Because animation layers, unfortunately, if you just copy and paste it into a different anim BP, it doesn't work. You have to go through and manually create the animation layer, then add the input pose, then go into that layer, copy it, and paste it over. And it's just a very big annoyance. But this is kind of like the base of everything. You can pick and choose what parts you want to have. And commonly what people do is they'll merge this with ALS. So they'll do things like perform all this kind of like my procedural stuff for the upper body. And they'll perform all the ALS stuff on the lower body. Or whenever they're holding a firearm that is using my procedural system, they'll use my system. When they don't have a firearm in hand, then they switch to using the ALS stuff and all that kind of stuff. So there's infinite amount of ways you can really kind of go through and use it and merge it with other existing systems. It's all up to you to kind of figure out how you want to incorporate it into said systems. And again, you have some default values here that you can kind of tweak and just change to your liking. So if you have your own animation uh, aim offsets and stuff like that, you would probably want to disable use procedural spine and that kind of stuff. So that sums up the animation kind of section of things. Now we want to look at the firearm. So the firearm is another key section of this. So that kind of is what is the root of basically everything that you use, well, with a firearm. So starting out, we have the base firearm. We have a just a bunch of different settings that you can tweak for everything. And again, I'll be going through all of this stuff in a separate video individually. So I want to individually, or have a video that individually I cannot speak, have a video that it covers each specific section. So basically what a firearm is, it's you have your base mesh, and then you have a bunch of part components that make up everything else. So everything's done in kind of like a chain. So a part component is another key part, but that is for the attachment system. So you need kind of like a base to use the attachment system with. However, you can also use these attachment systems for other actors as well. So it's not specific to just the firearm. The only difference is these actually affect the firearm itself because the firearm has its own set of stats. If I can find them, which I feel like I'm being a little bit blind, right here. So depending on what parts you add and remove, it affects your weight, ergonomics, recoil, and muzzle velocity. So that kind of sums up the gist of the firearm. And again, I'm going to be going way more in-depth with all this because there's a lot more to cover. Now the part components. This is another key feature. So for example, if I hit play, you'll see that I have a complete firearm with a barrel and a suppressor. Now if we look at it, in this guy, I don't have a suppressor. But if we click on the barrel, we can see that that's a separate part. And if we go to the default part, which it, that's the one that it spawns, can see on the muzzle device so here this barrel has a part component and that part component is a surefire muzzle device or flash hider so let's go to that and here you can see that that muzzle device right here has a suppressor attached to it so that's how you end up with a suppressor so if I go ahead and go to the customizer click on the suppressor remove it you can see the muzzle device remove the muzzle device you can see the barrel so everything kind of goes and is linked kind of through a chain. So once you get to the end of the chain for the muzzle, it'll end up using the suppressor. Then if you remove the suppressor, it'll end up using the Surefire muzzle device. If you remove that, it'll use the barrel. So everything is linked down and it knows what it is and it's supposed to use. You don't have to worry about any of that. So that's kind of the just about how you go through all this stuff, uh, you have a lot of stuff that you use through the firearm. So the firearm is how you actually interact with all your parts too. So you can see here, like for when I press L and O, I increase and decrease the reticle brightness of whatever optic I am holding. I press M, I cycle and I aim with a different reticle. You know, I press, I think it's like V or something like that. I just got to find it. Yeah. If I press V, I toggle my light on and off. I press B. I toggle my laser on and off. I can actually remove that. And same thing, I press in, I cycle my laser color, and all that. Now, that's not the limit. That's not limited to what all you need to do. The firearm, I kind of use as a house for a lot of the core functions that you're 
most likely commonly going to use. But you can do a lot more. There's more functionality hidden away in different parts. So for example, I go ahead and I get my firearm. And if I search for get part, you can see I have two functions, get part component and get part components with an S. So the difference between these is get part component is all singular stuff. So for example, you only have one barrel, one handguard, one stock, one forward grip, and one muzzle. So the muzzle, that's even though you might have a barrel, flash hider, and a suppressor on that flash hider, it's going to return the ending part, which would be the suppressor. So you would use that, and you would get access to whatever part you wanted, and it just pulls right from it. The get part components returns things that you might have multiples of. So for example, you might have multiple sights, multiple lights and lasers, multiple magnifiers, and multiple things that have render targets on them that you may want to get. So this gets everything with a render target. And then lastly, we have get all part components, which just grabs everything that is linked. So everything that is attached to the firearm and everything that is attached to parts on the firearm. So from there, you would use basically this kind of how you need. So for example, with a light and laser, what I would do is if we search for, we'll just do a for each loop on it and we'll cast this to a light laser. Let's see, maybe it's not letting me cast because I don't have an execution set up. We'll just plug it up there. Oh wait, there, we need to get the part. So get part. I forgot this returns components. And here we can cast to a light laser. So we're going to cast to the light laser base. So now we have all the functionality inside of our light laser class. And from here, we can call different functions like, let's see, what would be an example? Set power mode. So we can set a specific power mode. Now we wouldn't be able to call this from the firearm. So if we drag out the firearm, we search for power, nothing comes up. However, we can do other functions like turning, using the light laser, cycling the light laser modes, and all that kind of stuff. But for specific functionality that you may want to call, which I recommend you looking through the class, is you can actually call them on a specific part. So there's things that are generic that I keep on the firearm, which I'm half tempted, quite frankly, to remove. So you have to go through a setup like this when you want to use stuff. But you have the ability to easily do things like this that are not necessarily right out of the firearm, that aren't functions on the firearm. They're actually on the specific part themselves. So there's stuff hidden away that you can call there to, as to not completely clutter up the firearm. Now, you can see a huge list of Blueprint functions, which I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so inside of the uh, description of the plugin, you will see this giant list of functions here. So as you can see, it is auto-generated. So excuse any mistakes that I may have made in programming whatever this crap outputs. So you can see kind of here, and I'll show you how to follow through with it. So here you can see, this is, we have the actual class. So this would be the animation instance, and this one would be for the firearm. And then this one would be for grenades, projectiles, so on and so on. So starting with the project or the firearm, you can see all the functions that are inside of it and its category, so you know how to find it. So let's say we know we want a function that's here on the firearm. Let's go ahead and scroll down and find one we might want to call. So we will just grab, let's see. We will do get fire mode. So in order to get fire mode, what we know we have to get the firearm. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this stuff out. So we have our firearm. From here, we know that this function is in the section default. So we have FPS template and default. So if you want to, for example, do this manually, you would just find FPS template, find default, and here you have get fire mode. Or alternatively, like what you're most likely going to do is just search for get fire mode. You know, and you're done. You have the fire mode that it's on. So that's kind of how you go through and you find it. So then you have things like is suppressed, which have their own kind of returns. So is suppressed, which returns true or false, all that kind of stuff. So it's very simple to read. And you can kind of go through and search for specific functions or go through the list and see if you can find one that you like. So you can see everything here. You can find all the stuff in relation to, uh, you know, handling your flashlight and your laser. And you might not find what you want. So then what I would recommend you do is you go down and you would just go to the 
light laser, go down to the actual class, which would be right here, and you can scroll through and see. So here under toggles, we have toggle light, toggle laser, toggle light and laser, and whether or not we want to sync them up. Uh, and here we can find cycle power modes, which that we can actually, well, that we need to call through the light laser. So we know that in order to call cycle power modes or set power mode, because it's not in the firearm, we need to go ahead and get the light laser base or the light laser that's on our firearm and call one of these functions on it. So we know how we need to get it. Again, I'll be showing you more in depth later on, but that's kind of the gist about how you can go through and do stuff. Now that is a very, very basic overview. There's a lot more classes in here that can be covered, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible and covering the, as you could say, the easier stuff first before we move on. So this might be a little bit confusing at first, but I can guarantee after a couple videos of this where I go through and actually go in depth on specific things one by one, it'll, it'll start making more sense. So that's going to wrap up this video. In the next video, we're going to continue on, and I'm going to go through and cover things like what do all these settings do inside the character component, and then same thing for what are part components. Then I want to have a video for what all is the firearm and all that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of flow I'm planning on going through with this series. So anyways, that's going to wrap this up. If you have any questions, feel free to hop in the Discord. And as always, the plugin is linked in the description below. So I'll see you in the next video.